Welcome everyone. My name is Whitney Inge. I'm the Director of Alumni and Donor Engagement here at Davenport University. And we are really excited to host another Davenport Dialogues here. I would love to introduce Brianna, who is here from Verizon. Thank you so much for joining us, Brianna. Awesome. Thank you so much, Whitney. Uh, it's so great to be here. And um, I just to briefly introduce myself to everyone, Brianna Ellison from Verizon. Um, I lead our community engagement and external affairs here in Michigan. Um, so I work on all things involving philanthropy and grants um, to volunteerism, employee volunteerism of Verizon employees, also some of our thought leadership work. Um, and our memberships with chambers and associations and those kind of things. And so um, I've just been really um, proud of our partnership um, this year with Davenport University. We work together on a um, the Future Urban STEM Educators Clubs program, uh, which is a really amazing program um, to help introduce college students um, to the fields of education and STEM. Um, by having them create lessons and activities for middle school students. And so um, we were able to invest in that program and um, are very proud of the work that it's accomplishing. Um, so today, I'm really excited to talk to everyone, um, and I know this will be recorded and shared as well, about um, digital inclusion and, uh, you know, just kind of set the stage around the digital divide and Verizon's work in, in the digital inclusion space in particular. And so um, I, I put together this slideshow that I'm just going to run through and I'll pause um, at a few different times throughout the show. If there's any questions that I can answer um, and if I can't answer them today, happy to happy to find an answer for you. So um, I can go ahead and get started here um, to kind of level set um, with what Verizon and our foundation is all about. Um, I wanted to start with touching on Citizen Verizon which is our plan for economic, environmental, and social advancement. So what is um, Citizen Verizon? Um, as a company, we're committed to moving the world forward for everyone. So this is our company-wide responsible business plan um, that really deepens our historic commitment to social responsibility. Um, the plan was put together before the pandemic and it's really integrated throughout Verizon's overall business strategy. And we'll talk a little bit more about that and why um, later on. But with Citizen Verizon, we're leveraging um, all of Verizon's technology, innovation, and people to make the world a better place. So we're on a mission to solve some of the biggest challenges that um, impact underrepresented populations. And as part of this, we've made a $3 billion um, commitment um, for investment over a five-year period, 2020 through 25, to continue helping communities um, close the digital divide. Um, so here are really the three main pillars um, of Citizen Verizon. So digital inclusion, climate protection, and human prosperity. Um, and prior to COVID-19, many Americans were unemployed, and underemployed and really lacked access to the tech skills training that they need to join and thrive in the digital workforce. And the pandemic only exacerbated these issues and created wider inequalities. Um, also, um, we saw that the planet was and is experiencing serious climate issues before the pandemic. Um, and we're continuing to use our technology um, to protect the environment, protect vulnerable communities and those that are really most at risk of the impacts of climate change. So here are just a few of the, the, the pillars. These are our three pillars and a few goals associated with those. And we are going to take a really deep dive today into the digital inclusion um, piece and digital inequity. Um, and the digital divide. Um, so really that um, is all about addressing barriers to get digital inclusion, to, to that face digital inclusion and enable connectivity for those who need, need it most. And so our goals there are by 2030, Verizon wants to provide 10 million youth and young people with digital skills training and to support 1 million small businesses with the tech resources they need. Um, also, I just touched on the, the $3 billion commitment that we've made to accomplish that. 
Climate protection is all about reducing the impact of our direct operations and innovating to really minimize climate impact on our communities. And some of the big goals that the company has there are becoming net zero in carbon emissions um, in our operations by 2035. Also continuing to leverage our tech innovations um, to help reduce climate change and or reduce climate and impacts in communities. So um, finally, human prosperity. And this really ties in nicely to the work that we're doing with Davenport directly um, with the future urban STEM educators clubs, but creating an opportunity for individuals and communities to thrive and responsibly grow our business. So um, we, we are seeking to support 500,000 individuals with tech training by 2030. And as part of that too, um, to achieve 2.5 million employee hours committed to volunteerism, which is a huge number across our company. We have about 135,000 employees worldwide. Um, here in Michigan, we have um, just over 1,300 employees. And so um, our volunteerism goals are lofty um, and something that we're very committed to um, and that so many of our employees participate in. So I am going to just pause before I launch this video um, because I'd really like to transition into talking about the digital divide and digital inclusion. So if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer those now. All right, great. Um, and there will be plenty more time for questions if they So let me start um, by playing this video. And I think that this is a really nice um, kind of overview of our digital inclusion work um, and the different communities that we seek to touch with our efforts. So let me play this and then um, we can chat a little bit more about um, the digital divide and um, some of this important um, work that, that we're undertaking along with so many community partners. So. I'll go ahead and see this up. When the revolution come knocking at my door, I ain't fighting just for myself no more, no more. Got my brothers by my side and on the wings of freedom we ride. When the revolution come knocking at my door. At Verizon, we are committed to closing America's digital divide. We are investing to bring tech and connectivity to underserved schools across the country, making high-quality connectivity more affordable for low-income families and expanding access to rural communities so more people have the affordable, high-quality internet they deserve. It's all part of our $3 billion commitment to help those who need it most and close the digital divide because we believe no one should be left behind. Great. So um, that was just kind of a little overview. Um, and so um, really we are addressing and how we see um, addressing digital inclusion is really broken into four main areas. Um, access, affordability, application, and advocacy, and they are all really interconnected. So just to kind of define those um, before we start talking about some of this work, um, access is really access to connectivity with sufficient speeds, affordability, so affordable devices and connectivity that offers quality service without um, significant restrictions. Application, so actually using that connectivity to transform lives through meaningful services and also the skills to use them. And then finally, advocacy. So our work in urging policymakers to create new and long lasting solutions, and that's really key, are solutions that are long lasting and not temporary um, to really address the digital divide. So why do we need to address digital inclusion right now? Um, so, there's, the, there's really a few different pieces that we're focused on. There's education, rural communities, small businesses. Um, and on the education piece, really after more than a year of remote learning, we know that up to 12 million school students are still lacking in e-learning device connectivity or both. Um, and we support in the states where we have our Fios, um, our Fios product, our home internet service. Um, we are supporting access for customers with Fios Forward 
which helps eligible households save $20 a month for high-speed fiber um, home internet service. And we have other programs that we're working on um, through the federal government with their, um, with their recent emergency broadband um, program, benefit program. Um, we were definitely plugged into that and making sure that, that those discounts and that, that federal subsidy was something that, that we were taking a part in. So um, also the rural communities, uh, the FCC estimates that at least 14.5 million homes don't have access to broadband connectivity, which is really necessary today um, for not only digital learning, but remote work, telehealth visits, and so much more, even socialization we've seen in some of my work just here in Michigan, um, even seniors, you know, and social isolation among seniors um, who have not had the ability during COVID to get online. Um, in rural communities, one of the partnerships that I really wanted to highlight is with the National 4-H Council. And so we've worked with them to provide digital skills trainings to adults um, in rural communities with a specific focus on people of color through their Tech Changemakers program. We've also worked with nine historically HBCUs, um, all land-grant institutions, um, and the program will credential teens and communities to provide training um, that we expect will empower 15,000 adults with basic digital skills needed for jobs, education, banking, and healthcare by the end of the year. So these are all um, kind of tied into our work in some of those communities. Um, and we know that without this access to connectivity and tech resources and tools, that millions of underserved students are falling behind. Um, they're falling behind their peers academically. They're unable to consistently access lectures or submit homework. Um, and, you know, even turning here to the small business community, um, during the pandemic, hundreds of thousands of U.S. small businesses either closed temporarily or permanently. Um, and we saw that minority and women-owned businesses had really been hit particularly hard. Um, and so in that space, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, um, you know, a lot of businesses have pivoted to doing more internet business, um, yet less than half of small businesses sell their products online. And so we believe that with the proper tech connectivity and resources and training that this can be changed for the better. So here are, and I know I touched on this, some of our digital inclusion commitments. So digital inclusion is really focused on addressing barriers and enabling connectivity to those who need it most. Our key goals at Verizon are to provide 10 million youth with digital skills training by 2030 through our Verizon Innovative Learning programs, um, both our learning program, our out of school program, and also our new HQ program. And I'll talk a little bit more about those because they're really cool resource and we definitely want to spread the word here in Michigan um, about those programs and how people can plug into them. Also, um, we aim to help 1 million small businesses um, by providing the resources to help them thrive in the digital economy um, by 2030. So um, more on our Verizon Small Business Accelerator. Um, but we really, in a digital world, you know, access, we know that access is really only the beginning. So we're focused on promoting technology as a tool that can improve communities, education, and small businesses. Um, here is a, a little bit more information about um, kind of our, our work in the education space in particular when it comes to digital inclusion. So we want to expand our Verizon Innovative Learning Initiative with having the largest cohort ever of 350 schools by 2021. So that was one of our first aims. Next was to bring this transformative power of 5G and technology to uh, 100 Title I schools across the country in the coming years and creating labs um, in these schools um, where, where schools can actually use 5G to do some really cool learning um, in the XR space, so AR, VR, MR, um, and we'll talk more about some of that as well. And then finally, um, we launched Verizon Innovative Learning HQ this year, which is an online education portal that provides free learning content to K-12 teachers, parents, students, 
and professional development resources for teachers. And this is available to everyone. So um, we are, you know, really focused on this education space and making an impact. Um, a little bit more about Verizon Innovative Learning. Um, here you can see kind of just a cool little infographic about the program and some of the different components, like what goes into the Verizon Innovative Learning Program. 5G, labs, schools, STEM programs and camps. Um, and so it's really, um, it's really kind of neat to be able to see all the different pieces and how they can work together um, to help um, the millions of under-resourced students in the U.S. that lack this access to technology and lack this access to skills that they need to um, succeed in today's digital world. Um, and we know that many communities don't have equal exposure to connectivity and technology, and many of the schools struggle to help keep students interested in STEM subjects. Um, they might lack the resources to teach relevant skills like coding and engineering, um, among you know other STEM-related subjects. Um, and we know that in this increasingly technology-dependent economy, it's more important than ever that we really help provide under-resourced students with the skills they need to put them on the path to success. Um, and so this program was launched in 2012, and since then um, has reached more than 480,000 students, and we've provided over $535 million in market value towards STEM education and helping these different communities bridge the digital divide. Um, and kind of the crux of this whole thing is that Verizon Innovative Learning provides free technology, access, innovative learning programs um, to really transform this experience both in school and at home, which is especially cool with given, you know, the, the challenges of this last year and a half, two years. Um, and so enabling students wherever they are to really develop these skills. So let me move to the HQ. And I know I just touched on this briefly, um, but the Verizon um, Innovative Learning Headquarters is that is that platform. It's open to all. Um, it's free to all educators across the US. Um, and it's a portal um, that helps support our, our goals that I've laid out and really leverages our years of experience with um, the Greater Verizon Innovative Learning Program. So um, tapping into our approach to integrate technology into classrooms and enhance the learning experience in under-resourced schools. Um, and the program allows all students and educators to experience augmented reality and virtual reality through different curated learning experience that are posted in the portal. And for teachers, um, it also includes different standard aligned lessons, professional development aligned um, with different research backed micro credentials. Um, and all of this has been developed in partnership with um, some really cool and cutting edge content creators. And you might wonder, you know, well, so what are some of these key features and, you know, what is some of the some of the the benefits that are brought by this program. So, like I mentioned, like really um, transformative next gen XR educational experiences, um, different, you know, tools, um, professional development. Um, accessible via things that are accessible via basic technology. So like a Chromebook to really sophisticated VR devices. And so um, we've done a lot in this space, both in the education side, the cultural side. We have great partnerships. Um, we had a great partnership with the Smithsonian and some of um, the digitalization of their collections. Um, and there's really, you know, cool things that can be enabled by the future of all of these developments and technology. So you might wonder, like, and we might wonder, is this working? Like, what are the results of these programs and these millions and billions of dollars that Verizon and other companies might be committing to um, the digital divide and digital inclusion? And so we have some initial data. Um, you know, this is just kind of um, a, a first overlook at, at some of the different pieces. So, you know, our Ville schools, 
um, our 5G connected schools in Miami and Cleveland, and we hope to scale that up to 100 in the next couple years. The labs, we have 42 labs um, that are on track to be completed um, this fall with an additional 35 next year. Um, we have the Verizon out of school program, which has really enabled um, people to, instead of just it being the entire VILS program being in school based, to be able to send devices um, to students and teachers to enable them to be able to access this content and some of these great platforms at home. So, um, you know, laptops and connectivity solutions, that kind of thing. Um, and so you see kind of all around the side, some of these different pieces and what that really has led to um, in terms of this VIL program um, for under resourced schools at the national level. Um, and so um, I am going to go to the next page because some of these numbers I think are really fascinating. So um, due to this program, students and teachers have really told us that they were well, well prepared for hybrid and virtual instruction that we saw in the last year and a half. 93% said that VILS made aspects of remote instruction easier. That was 93% of, of teachers. 92% um, of teachers agreed that it helped them prepare more for remote learning. And 88% of coaches said that VILS positively impacted their ability to differentiate instruction. Um, so these are really, you know, just great numbers. Um, furthermore, if we take a look at what some of the students are reporting, almost half of the students across the top here are saying that this program made them more aware of tech careers, that they'd like to actually secure a job that uses technology, and that they're more interested in attending college. Um, and then when we start to go onward from that, 51% um, are more confident, 73% said learning is more interesting, and 75% said that learning is more fun. Um, which is exactly what we like to hear. So to kind of talk about, you know, beyond the VILS program and the education piece, and this is where some of the really interesting um, the things around technology comes into play. Um, the AR and VR experiences that are going to be enabled, um, that can be enabled by 5G, can allow students and teachers to engage with content in new immersive ways. Um, you know, the, the, there's the immersion piece, there's the collaboration piece. So the reduced lag time of 5G in terms of collaboration can really make it feel that we are, you know, having natural conversations with each other in a live classroom virtually. And I think a lot of us have actually seen that over the last year and a half, those of us in the workforce who need to use these platforms for meetings, the fact that we can be on these video conference calls and there is very, you know, little to no lag time um, in some of these conversations is incredible and just speaks to how far we've come in the last 5, 10, 20 years even. So um, just a few examples. I mean, just imagine, imagine, um, imagine a classroom where students can walk among ancient pyramids or they can fly through the human circulatory system, or even imagine a museum field trip where students can use phones and tablets to interact with different exhibits. Um, they can conjure the image of a woolly mammoth um, at an ice age diorama. Um, it, it, that could just be one example. Um, also think about just the seamless interaction of students in remote learning where connectivity is also often a barrier um, or on group projects and ways to collaborate in that space. So there are so many um, things that can be enabled here and we're working on all of those at Verizon. So with the rollout of 5G, um, we're really upscaling our network at Verizon so and our technology so that over time data is going to move faster. It's going to move in larger amounts and um, and among more simultaneous users than ever before. So more people will be able to get on at these fast speeds and have lower lag times. Um, and so our 5G ultra wideband at Verizon is being launched in select cities, airports, stadiums, and other areas. I'm sure you've all heard about it, seen it on you know, every third commercial on television, um, but really Verizon is the 5G leader for social good in this space. 
And so, um, you know, we have the potential here to transform the way we live, work, learn, play, and make possible these advances in areas like augmented and virtual reality that really once seemed to be the stuff of science fiction and now is becoming a reality. So um, this is just a little bit more um, about how we're moving education forward. Like what are, the, what are the next steps in the education space, in the 5G space? What is Ryzen really looking to do in the years ahead? So I know I had mentioned bringing 5G to 100 Title I schools in the coming years and created, creating learning labs um, at select schools. Um, we were the first company to bring 5G to schools, um, and it's a Title I um, Verizon Innovative Middle School in Cleveland. Um, furthermore, bringing digital literacy to people outside of the classroom. So rural areas and, you know, as part of this, we are planning to open several community centers in high need areas starting in 2021. And um, these community centers will really give people of all ages, all backgrounds, an opportunity to receive tech training, sharpen their skills and be prepared for digital jobs. Um, and one of our, we do have one example um, that I wanted to just highlight. Um, in 2019, through our 5G EdTech Challenge, um, which is a partnership with the NYC Media Lab, um, we had nonprofits, universities, and startups all invited to submit experiences that use AR and VR, augmented reality, virtual reality, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and mixed reality. Um, and so they could submit these experiences to enhance student engagement and teacher professional development. And the 10 winning projects are actually now featured in the Verizon Innovative Learning Labs in the Ville schools. So we do so much and the things that I do on the ground in Michigan and that my colleagues do um, on the ground in states across the country is helping get the word out about these amazing opportunities to be able to use technology and innovation for good. So the last point I just wanted to um, touch on a little bit here before wrapping up and of course taking questions is our focus on um, small business. And I think that this is really top of mind for a lot of us and has been through the pandemic. We've seen small business um, struggle with shutdowns and, and being closed. Um, now we are seeing supply chain shortages, um, staffing shortages, and you know, we're moving to what we, what we know is kind of a heavy time for spending in the country with the holidays approaching. And so um, you know, it's, it's, it's important that we focus on small business now um, and in the future moving forward, um, especially in the digital inclusion space. And so we, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of our different programs that we've done to support small business in this space before really honing in um, to our latest um, program that we worked on with LISC. And so um, here are just a few, a few examples. Um, so we launched a virtual small business learning community to connect owners from underserved areas with, vir with virtual digital training and tools. Um, we have provided over $10 million in grants to small businesses through LISC, our partner at a national level. We've sponsored a program called Comeback Coach, um, which is a one-on-one -on -one coaching program initiative um, that was just really focused on small business owners and entrepreneurs and kind of weathering and coming out of COVID. Um, we've also launched Pay It Forward Live, which was a streaming series that provided entertainment to viewers. Um, there was a whole bunch of musical performers, um, big, big name celebrities. Um, and the, the whole point of the program was that people would tweet and amplify the message um, and tag their favorite small businesses and Verizon for every tweet and tag would donate money um, to supporting um, those small businesses. So that was hugely successful and a really fun um, you know, way to get engaged um, and bring some great talent um, to the table as well. Um, the last thing I just wanna highlight here is the Women's CoLab, which was an effort aimed at addressing um, the crisis of women, women leaving the workforce in particular at unprecedented rates during COVID. And so, um, you know, our, these programs have really been um, incredibly important. 
Um, you know, our work with LISC um, also included about $7.5 million in grants awarded in 2020. Um, and, you know, all of the programs have contributed in different ways. Um, the, one, of the, one of the pieces is Circle Around, which is a cool um, content media site where women can come together to find community and content that supports and inspires them. Um, we had a women in business mentorship program that was being implemented in partnership with Circle Around and the National Association of Women Business Owners. Um, and that provides mentoring and other practical advice. So lots of different things um, kind of in that space. Um, but really um, one of our most exciting projects that just launched um, this September is the Verizon Small Business Digital Ready Program. And this speaks directly to and directly supports our goal of providing 1 million small business with the tools they need to thrive in today's economy. Um, and so the vision there is to um, support businesses as they evolve. And the strategy is really focused on a tech based and scalable solution um, with high impact measurable re results. Um, that can you know, be designed to meet the needs of diverse small and medium-sized businesses. So um, just a little bit more on, on that program. Um, so this training program, it really brings together a number of proven resources and meaningful incentives um, to support these different communities, um, these different small business communities. And so, um, here is, you can kind of see how this accelerator, this program has four interconnected components. Um, and they're, they're all modules that build upon each other. Um, and you can kind of see you start at the bottom. So the four pieces are content, coaching, community, and incentives. So when we put all of these together, we can really help make positive change for helping small business get online um, and have this digital presence. So just to kind of touch um, briefly and go through these. Um, so the content piece um, is really all about curated and self-guided curriculum. So there's a dashboard and this program for small businesses is open to anyone. You don't have to be a Verizon customer. Um, you don't have to be from a certain area. Um, this is open to all small business and is a great um, kind of online dashboard. So as you go through it, um, so there's the content piece, which is curated and self-guided curricula, play, um, plus featured articles, sponsored content. Um, all of this provides essential and evergreen resources necessary to build and grow a business. Then the next step is the coaching piece. So um, businesses are able to fill out a profile and really kind of start to hone in through a questionnaire on what they need, what their specific challenges are, demographics about their business, how big are they, what's their structure. Um, and this can help then match with coaching. So mentoring and advising from experts to help guide these businesses and leveraging their knowledge and learnings to create a plan of action. Um, there's the community piece. So not only coaching from experts, but opportunities to make connections um, with other businesses who may have similar struggles, challenges, successes that they might want to share. So being able to share and receive that information and participate in different business development activities. And finally, um, the last piece there really being around incentives. So, um, and, you know, an exclusive marketplace that has tools, solutions, products, and services that can help propel um, these SMBs forward. And so all of this kind of comes together um, to create Verizon Small Business Digital Ready. And we've been working, um, myself, my colleagues, so many others have been working to get the word out about these programs and this amazing resource. Um, we work with so many local chambers of commerce, business associations. Um, and so we definitely are always, you know, boots on the ground here in our communities to try to make sure that the resources that Verizon is providing at a national level that we're able to get the word out in a very grassroots way here locally, um, because it's so important. You know, we're as a company, you know, providing this content, working with incredible partners at the national level. This um, 
really cool story. So the Verizon Small Business Digital Ready Program, one of the people on the steering committee actually came from our partnership here in Michigan um, with Jamil Robinson from the Grand Rapids Area Small Businesses um, Organization. And so we had worked together and um, I recommended him as part of the community steering committee and um, he was accepted into that role. So we do have a Michigander um, who has their pulse on what is happening in the small business space that actually helped um, create this platform and shape how it's going to look. So I'm very proud of that and the work that he did um, to help make that happen. So um, with that, I'm going to kind of conclude my remarks and I'm happy to, I'll stop sharing, um, but I'm just happy to take any questions or comments or um, if people have requests for information or anything like that, um, just, you know, pleased to, um, pleased to really be a part of that and, and help answer those. So feel free. Brianna, it looks like we've got a question um, asking, how do you think the new infrastructure bill will impact the digital divide? Yeah, um, the, the new infrastructure, so the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act has really allocated a significant amount of funding um, for um, broadband and connectivity and infrastructure. And so, um, you know, there are some programs that are being, it appears that are being put on more permanent footing um, through, through that program, which is something that Verizon has been advocating for. And so, you know, I really do think that, that this program will have a positive impact and that this bill will have a positive impact in bringing broadband um, and connectivity to unserved and underserved communities. Um, there are a lot of layers um, of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, um, and especially the broadband piece and how, um, you know, that's going to be administered. And we're still learning about it and, um, you know, kind of collecting information on all those different pieces. But um, it is a significant investment that the federal government is making um, in this space. So I can only hope that um, this will create positive change in bridging the digital divide. I know that it's definitely a priority of you know the governments and it's a priority of Verizon's and so many others. So um, I am optimistic. Thank you so much. Um, before we wrap up, I just wanna give yeah. everyone an opportunity if there are any last minute questions before we sign off here. Um, Brianna, thank you so much for sharing all of this information. It's really incredible, some of the things that Verizon is doing. Um, and this is kind of like a new hot button, button topic. So this was really wonderful information. And I thank you so much for sharing that with us and our alums. Um, for everyone who joined us, I'm just going to drop a link in the chat box here. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, this is recorded. So if you found this information valuable, wanted to share it with some of your coworkers or family and friends, it will be up on our Davenport Dialogues website within the next couple of days. You will also receive an email with a survey. We just ask that you fill that out at your leisure. Um, we do also have a few upcoming winter events on our events page there. So um, those are getting updated daily. So come back and get ready registered for some of those if you're interested. And I think that's all we've got. Uh, Brianna, thank you again. This was fantastic. And everyone have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me.